already. I'm reading from verse 8. Is that a, very, a little bit long? 8 to 17. From verse 8 to 17. All right. So, the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servant, saying, In such and such place shall be my camp. The king of Syria went into war, went to fight. They were in war with Israel. And the king of Israel will call his people, his subordinates, his team, and will tell them, look, we are going to, when they plan, we are going to attack them from this area. We're going to stand here. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 9. This man, stand in place. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And there was a prophet, there was a man of God in Israel. And any time the king of Israel will meet, and the king of Syria will meet with his people, and then they will plan how to attack the Israelites, Bible says what happens. The man of God, God will reveal to the prophet, he will reveal to the man of God, and the man of God will tell the king of uh, 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 Israel that listen, don't pass north, don't pass south, don't pass east. Why? Because the Syrians are, are there. They are waiting for you to pass there to attack you. Hallelujah. So whenever the king of Syria will plan with his people, when they know that as for this is plan A or plan B, and that one, by all means, they will be able to succeed and, and destroy the, the Israelites. They will be there and be there and be there. Nobody passes there. They don't get there. And it happened on several occasions. May your enemies miss you like that. Amen. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. May your enemies plan that they should never get you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What, whatever they plan, may God direct your path. Amen. And may God help you and assist you to always outwit them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May they lay in wait and may it be for nothing. Amen. Because they will never get you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 10. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him off, and saved himself there, not once, not twice. So the king of Israel always listened to the man of God, listened to the prophet, that is why it's important to listen to your servants of God. And because he listened to them, they, they always, and not once, not twice, on some occasions, he was able to what? To be saved. From what? The attack of what? The Syrians. Alright, let's read on. 11. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled. The heart of the king of Syria was disturbed for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will he not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? So the king of Syria was worried, he was disturbed. He was like, Who is against us among us? There's somebody among us who is against us. Because every plan we take, the, the king of Israel gets it. And we have tried all we can, but we are not able to get him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read on. 12. And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but who? Elisha. Elisha the prophet that is in Israel. Tell the king of Israel the words that thou speakest, even in thy bedchamber. And so that one of the servants of the king of Syria told him that there's nobody amongst us who is against us. There is a prophet. Say a prophet. A prophet. There is a prophet in Israel called Elisha. Even when you plan something in your bedroom, God will reveal to him. Hallelujah. Amen. And so every plan we take, God reveals to him and he tells the king of Israel. All right. Verse 13. And he said, go and spy where he is. Why is it that the devil tries and tries? He sees he's, he's losing, but he's keep, he keeps trying. He never stops trying. You were, you were, no, just, just think about that before we go. King of Syria, you were planning to destroy who? The king of Israel or Israelites. And the prophet was seeing everything you planned. Now you want to go and attack them 
man himself, who God reveals everything to, you want to go and attack him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And that is the work of the enemy. When the enemy is doing, he doesn't care. He will do and do and do. That is why you too, you must not do what? Relax. Because the moment you relax, he will get you. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in where the time. So the king said, go and spy where the, the uh, Elisha lives, so that I will send some people to go and, and arrest him and bring him. And so they told him where he lives. Okay, we are reading one. What him? Therefore sent he Peter horses and chariots and a great horse, and they came by night and compassed the city. So he sent horses and chariots. Hallelujah. Amen. Just for the sake of Elisha. You are important. Say I'm important. I'm important. Oh, say it properly. Say it to you like you mean it. I'm important. Say it like you believe it. I'm important. Whether you don't believe it, you can still say it. I'm important. Hallelujah. Amen. You are so important that the devil will spend time and hours just for your life. Amen. Amen. He sent chariots. He sent horses. He sent hosts of people to go in the night. It's very important you pray at dawn. Dawn prayer is very good. Because the devil mostly attacks and do all his, the U.S.'s, they do all their kulungungus in the night. Hallelujah. Amen. And they went in the night and compassed the city, the city of Dota. All right, verse 15. And when the servants of the man of God was risen early, who the servants, say servants. Seven. When the servant of the man of God, he rose up very early. One of the servants of the man of God. He got up very early. And he did what? He gone forth and behold, and those from past the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, Master, how shall we do? Hallelujah. Amen. One of the servants of Elisha got up very early. And when he got up and he lifted his head, when he saw the horses, he saw the soldiers, he saw the chariots, then his heart, bam, 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 there is trouble. We've been surrounded. There is an attack. Hallelujah. Amen. So he went to Elisha and he told Elisha, Master, uh -huh. hey, trouble don't come. Hallelujah. Amen. What are we going to do? Verse 16. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. He answered and he said, What? Fear not, they that are with us, they are more than those who are with them. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 17. And that is where I want. And Elisha prayed. And today I wish I have a little time for us to pray. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Say, open my eyes. Oh, say, open my eyes. Say, open my eyes. Open my eyes, oh Lord. That he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire run about Elisha. Hallelujah. Amen. God revealed three things to me when I read this scripture. I've been reading, I've prayed with it. But quite recently, I got three different kinds of revelations. And I want to share it with you. And then I'll see if we can. Spend a little time to pray. Then after prayer, we take communion. And then we close. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Number one. Say number one. number one. Number one. God made me understand that there is what we call spiritual wealth. Say spiritual wealth. Spiritual wealth. There is a spiritual wealth which you must know that it's really, really important. Whether you like it or you don't like it, there is a spiritual world. Whether you care or you don't care, there is a spiritual world. And a lot of things are going on in the spiritual world. 
And that is why you don't have to joke with that part of life. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a spiritual world, and sometimes in the spiritual world, that is where your future blessings, that is where when your eyes are really open, you will see that, oh, this, the way you are looking now, the way you are now, that is not how you are supposed to be. There are good things about you. God is protecting you. God has blessed you. He has a lot of good things in store for you. Amen. But they are all kept in the spiritual world. And Amen. if your eyes are not open, you wouldn't see. There is a spiritual world. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the first thing that I learned. That in this life, don't only look at the physical side part of life. Don't only focus on the physical part. Get to know that whatever is happening around you, there is a spiritual world that is also contributing to it. Am I getting to someone? Yes. If things are delaying, if things are not going well, if things are going upside down, if things are going wrong, please get to know that in the physical, you are seeing something else. That in the spiritual, something else that is also going on. Amen. Hallelujah.
to the spiritual world. There is a possibility that people who are supposed to help you, their eyes are blind. People around you, their eyes are blind. So what they see is what is happening in the physical. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. What they see is what is happening to you now. So when they look at you, they see Lucy wearing a green dress. But they don't see that in the next three months, your dress is going to change from green to white. Yeah. And God is going to bring your life back now. And things are going to change around you. They are only seeing what they are seeing with their eye. Yeah. And sometimes, when our helpers, when people who are around us, they don't see what God has prepared in the spiritual world for us. They complain. They get worried. Like the servant of Elisha. He was worried. He panicked. He was scared. Hallelujah. If it were, if Elisha never prayed that his eyes should be opened, he would even look for an opportunity to run away and leave Elisha. For what? For, for his life to be what? To be spared or to be saved. Some people leave you. Some people run away. Some people are not, but don't come to you. Why? Because they don't know what God has in store for you. They don't know. Their eyes are blind to the spiritual part of life. And today, that is what I want us to pray about. That God let people who are around me see who I am made of. God, open their eyes. Let them know that, Lord, you have good things in store for me. Hallelujah. I finish my message. Some people are gossiping about you because they are blind. Some people hate you, they don't like you because they are blind. Don't worry what is happening to you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Hold on to God. That is why I love the song Mama left. I will cling. To the old rocket ground. Can you bring that for me, please? And exchange it someday for a crown. I will cling to the old, to the old rocket ground. Oh, I will exchange it someday for a crown. Let me say my last thing. You yourself. You say me myself. Me myself. My eyes. My eyes. Must be open. Must be open. Oh, say it again. Say me myself. myself. Me myself. My eyes. My eyes. Must be open. Must be open. Come to think of it. If Elisha didn't know, if Elisha did not see that he was protected, if Elisha did not see that chariots were all on the mountain. Horses had surrounded him. What do you think Elisha would do himself? When the servant went to him and told him, Master, come and see you. There will be funeral in the house that day. They will all weep. They will all cry. They will all panic. What do we do? What do we do? Say me myself, God. Do what? When the challenges are coming, when the problems are coming, when issues are coming, when you go to sleep, God should open your eyes. God should tell you, my daughter, look, this is where I'm taking you. This is where I'm putting you. This is what I, what I have for you. Don't panic. Don't fear. Hallelujah. And so when you get up in the morning, when challenges are so much, when people know that you are going through difficulties, you wake up in the morning and they see you and you are you are shouting in the house alone and you are doing all single, single, praise the Lord and you come to church and people are thinking that you don't have money, you are left with one dress, things are not going well and you come to church and you are dancing and you are going there and you are coming and then you, you, you are supposed to do 
something in the house of God and you are using all your strength, you are using all your might, you are using all your time to invest into the things of God. And people are wondering that how is this person making it? How is this person going there? How is this person doing it? You don't care, you don't bother because God has spoken to you, because God has revealed to you, because God has opened your eyes and you have seen some things that God is prepared for you in the rest of the spirit. And so when people think that they will put your hand like this and cry and weep, when they see you, you are rejoicing. When they see you, you are dancing. When they see you, you are going about the things of God. They think you should sit down. They think you should, you should cry. They think you should worry that you are not worried. Why? Because you know your God and your God knows you and your God has opened your eyes and your God has shown to you where he's taking you so you are not bothered. The God opened your eyes. The God speaks to you. The God opened your eyes. The God speaks to you. The God opened your eyes. The God speaks to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, Bible says hope defend makes the heart sick. Even if you believe, sometimes you can go through some challenges and then it will shake you a little bit. Even if you have a, a very strong faith, some things can come and you say, hey, let me wait. Though. Have I taken the right decision? Oh, if you have hope in something and the thing is, you know, deferred, and the thing is deferred, it's delaying, it's keeping long. Sometimes it makes your heart work sick. And so sometimes it is good God will keep revealing. You, you, you are dreaming you are doing your wedding. You are dreaming you have millions of cities. You are dreaming God is doing this for you. You are dreaming God is doing that for you. When you get up, you are excited. When you get up, you are happy. When you get up, you are sure. When you get up, you know where you are going. When you get up, you know God is taking you somewhere. Hallelujah. Open my eyes to see
house. At the workplace, in the area, in your environment, wherever you go, in the church, may they see the good side of you. Listen, if the devil paints you and closes the eye of people around you, I don't know whether I, I believe there's nobody here like that. You, pay, you can kill yourself, cut your head and give it to people. Give them one hour after you have done good to them. Just one hour after you have done good, you see their color. They will turn their back towards you. I will destroy that in Jesus' name. May God open the eye of everyone around you. May they see your, your good heart. May they acknowledge your good heart. May they be in a position to help you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Close your eyes. You want to lift up your voice. Speak to God. Uh -huh. Open the eyes of people around me. Let them see who I am. Let them see what you have for me. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Uh -huh. 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 Pray to God. Uh -huh. Pray to God. I'm 